Oh my God. Oh my God. Guess who's in the newspaper? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm in the Croydon Advertiser for the show coming at the Bethlehem, the live lounge. Look at the picture they put of me in it. <laughs> Who buys this shit? Do you know what it says here? Twitter sensation, the artist taxi driver. 125,000 followers <laughs> on the internet. He's doing his... The artist taxi driver set to play a new tune at the Bethlehem Gallery. And look, look what other image they put in. One of my tote bags. Fuck here too. <laughs> oh my God. It's going to be an incredible... I did another interview yesterday for the Southwark News. That'll be coming out. <laughs> Who's in the fucking newspaper? Me. T Come on, sheeple, wake up. <laughs> who's, who's up? <laughs> oh, I'm so happy when I get in, when I do an intervention and I'm in the news. What else is in the news? Pretty shit stuff, actually. Seven million people struggling. Seven million people are waking up this morning in worrying, struggling, because of this shit country. We've got cost of living crisis, we've got electricity bills through the roof, we've got council tax going up, we've got people on strike. So you've got people struggling, this is on the BBC, and then look, they're putting zombie drugs inside your vapes. I don't know whether the two stories are related, but it, it seems like we, we, we're in dark times. We're in fucking dark times, mate. People people going to get... It's not even being hedonistic. It's just being like, I'm getting fucked. Do you know what I mean? People turn into drug addiction, alcoholism, because of debt. I'm not just talking about myself, but I'm talking about the general population. It's, it's tough, it's hard. And like, look at that, David Cameron says, yeah, no, I don't think we should stop arming Israel. They've got to finish the job. they got to go. It's a fucking disgrace. It's an absolute disgrace. David Cameron says UK won't suspend arms exports to Israel. Do you know the one thing that I learned over all these years doing news media and politics? Is you know, stop the war. You know, stop the war. This ideology, stop the war. The war's not supposed to be stopped. The war is not supposed to end. Ever. Ever. The war will never end. And it's the war machine. You've got banks, you've got oil, you got these people, they, got, they make billions out of it. They need it, they need, that's why like they push down at the bottom, the same in society, the same like with people in debt. You push down at the bottom, so the top comes up. They want your death. They want your suicide. They want your, your alcoholism, your drug addiction, your debt. They want you in misery. It's not even like, you know, this vulture capitalism. Fucking disaster capitalism. They want your disaster. It's a... F it's a painful place. Living. The struggle. You know, you get up every day and like, I'm in, I'm in a very privileged position making art. Wake up every day. It's tough thinking what to do, how do you do it, trying to explain to, to, to myself. You know, I was out with that Cara May, who's like this author over in New Cross, went out for lunch. 
she's written a book like she's been around I'm not even sure how old she is 80 90 she was telling me she's written this story she's writing a script it's called the dream snatcher so basically the dream snatcher comes to town he's a bad man he's a bad man he's got lots of money and he gives people he says to people you give me your dreams and i'll give you the money he's got like gold so everyone's like yeah they all sell their dreams for money it's, you know, like it's the capitalism but it's, you know it's a metaphor for life anyway the dream the dream snatcher he's he's having a tell he's still not dreaming he's bought all the dreams the, the town they're in misery they can't sleep and there's one little girl jody and she doesn't sell her dreams because her nana said Whatever you do, don't sell your dreams. So the dream snatcher is saying, oh, I'm going to fuck it. I'll burn the town down. If you don't sell me your dream, I will burn the fucking town down. And they say, to jo he says to Jody, if you sell me your dream, I'll give everyone else their dreams back. Just give me your dream. She says, no, I'm not selling it. And Nana told her not. She's been brought up in foster care. They're really horrible to her. But she says, no, I'm not selling my dreams. My dreams are not for sale. Anyway, she's with this fella and she starts to like, because even though everything's really hard for her, she, she does this really positive outlook and she's still thinking things can get better. And she's like, st teaches the dream snatcher, who's this really horrible fella, how to sing how to dance, how to play music. And he falls asleep and he has a dream and he wakes up in a panic. So what's happening? I don't know what's happened to me. Little Jody, Cara, little Cara May says to him, you've had a dream. And I says to Cara, but what happened to the guy? What happens in the end? Does the, do, do you go back and you, you reveal why this guy was so, so awful? Why, what happened to him when he was younger? She says, no, he's like a Heathcliff. He's like a, a Clint Eastwood who just turns it. No one knows where he's come from. No one knows. He's like the man with no name. Well, actually, he's got a name. He's the dream snatcher. that's for you to think about that's for you that's why like in narrative the human brain i just thought fucking hell what a sweet story when i was sitting there and we was having this soup we was having like just like this really plain soup like two pounds it was like carrots and cauliflower and just a vegetable soup and she was telling me this story i got really emotional i listened so intent Intently. It's like she was reading me this bedtime story. It took about 10, 15 minutes. I never spoke and I normally never shut up. I never spoke. I just listened to her. That's life. That's the most beautiful experiences that, that you... In a world full of shit, you know, there are these little windows, there are these little moments when the war is not supposed to be stopped, when this war is supposed to last forever.